Hey everybody, welcome back to Some Things Fishy. Today we're going to be talking about clownfish, specifically about anemones though. We're going to be talking about what the best anemone is for your clownfish, for your tank. I'm sure you've been wondering this because like many things in the saltwater fish tank realm, there is so much to choose from, especially when it comes to anemones. And the prices can be super misleading. There can be, you know, the same anemone going for $75 in one place. That same anemone could be going for, you know, $250 in another website. So I kind of want to walk you through what you should be looking for. What's the best anemone for your tank? We're going to be diving into things like how hardy is it? Uh, a little bit about price. Uh, will it, your clownfish actually host it is going to be one of the biggest things I talk about in this video because as you will see, that can be an issue. So first things first though, if you do have a clownfish that is not hosting your an enemy, or if you're worried about that, feel free to check our other video. I'll post a card the, in the video right here that you can click on. We have a video that goes over how to help your clownfish host your an enemy. And with some of these techniques that we go through in that video, you should be able to get pretty much any species of clown to host pretty much any species of an enemy. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there are tons of different anemones that you can get for your tank. And I, as I mentioned, it can be really hard to find the right one, the right fit, the right price, things like that. So what I will say from the research I've done and from uh, the experience that I've had throughout my life, throughout my childhood with my dad's tanks, and my own tanks, the best anemone that you can get for your fish tank is a bubble tip anemone. There, there's, there's a lot of reasons to why. Uh, they're, they're very common. They're pretty easy to find. Most stores will carry them. Lots of online options to buy them as well. Prices vary a lot. So depending on what your budget is, you know, you can get a green bubble tip, for example, for less than a rose bubble tip. And it, you can kind of, you know, make it work with whatever your budget is, whatever your needs are, what your preference is. Lots of different options, options to choose from. The one that I've had pretty much always, the one that my dad's almost always had is the rose tip anemone. It is awesome. That thing seriously does not die. It is a hardy anemone. You don't have to worry about spending 250 bucks on a product that you just throw in your tank and dies the next week. You don't have to worry about that. They are awesome. In fact, my dad pretty much uses his rose tip anemone to fund his saltwater fish tank habits <laughs> because it splits so much that he can keep selling them and it keeps multiplying and he keeps selling them and the money that he gets back for it for it keeps funding his fish and other purchases. So it's a great anemone. Other ones that you can kind of be on the lookout for, carpet anemones, sebae anemones. Oh man, there's just so many, but in this video I want to specifically talk about that bubble tip anemone, and specifically the rose tip, because that's the one that I've had the most experience with. As I mentioned, very hardy, the prices can fit your budget. And I kind of want to go through uh, a little bit about clownfish anemone matches because not all clownfish are going to match with all anemones. So the specific types of clownfish, I'll just walk through specific species of clownfish that go really well with the bubble tip anemone. So you have cinnamon, red, black clownfish do really well with it. Uh, Clark's yellowtail clownfish. Uh, maroon, spine cheek, white stripe, gold stripe. If you don't know all these uh, species, that's okay. I'm just reading through a list right now. And if you do happen to have one of these, then feel you, you can feel total, total, totally comfortable in getting a bubble tip anemone. Uh, so the ones that I said, uh, let's see, red saddleback, fire clownfish, also very, very adaptable with the bubble tip. Uh, let's see. And then that's, those are the main ones. Those are the main ones. But here's the interesting part from the research I've done. What I've found is that Ocellaris and Percula clownfish aren't super adaptable to the bubble tip anemone, which I found really interesting because those are a couple of the main species of clownfish that you see in fish stores. They're typically the best priced. A lot of them have a lot of cool different colors and things like that. So, so I found that interesting Interesting because I've always had Ocellaris and Percula clowns throughout my whole life. My dad and everything, we've always had those. And they've always adapted really well with the rose tip, uh, rose bubble tip anemone. So I found it interesting that through my research, it was saying that these species of clowns typically 
or maybe I should say naturally don't host that bubble tip anemone. So after doing some more research, I found that uh, in the wild, in nature, these clowns don't necessarily have those types of anemones in their natural habitat. They typically go towards the Magnifica sea anemone. There's so many different names for that thing and for all of these types. So it's so, but if you type in Magnifica or Magnificent sea anemone, you'll find it. So those are the natural anemones for Ocellaris, uh, Percula, clowns. Those are typically what they find in host in the wild. So since they don't really have bubble tip anemones to host, like in their, it's not really in their nature to host them. So you might have to do a little bit of extra work to get the Oc Ocellaris and Percula clowns to host a bubble tip anemone. We've done it in the past many times. So maybe some sites, some resources tell you it's going to be super hard. I would tell you it really isn't a huge deal. It's not that hard. Sure, they may not host it right away. Like if you get an Ocellus clown and you have a Magnifica sea anemone, it might just literally go straight into that thing because it is wired into its DNA. With a bubble tip, you might it might take a couple weeks. It might take a month. It might take some you know, feeding it with a turkey baster right over that anemone or, or maybe putting it, sectioning it off so that it only has content, contact with that anemone. It might take a little bit of work, but honestly, for the prices that I was seeing for some of these bubble tip anemones, it's well worth it. Plus the fact that it is these anemones, bubble tips are beginner level, they're hardy. Like I said, the price isn't bad. I just think it's 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 worth maybe having to wait a little bit of time for your Ocellaris orange clownfish to start hosting it. That's my personal opinion. The This Magnifica sea anemone, man, that thing, I was looking online, it can go in, it can go above $250 to find. You might be able to find it in a clownfish store for cheaper or more, not sure, but all the resources that I'm seeing say that it's expert level, you gotta be super careful with it. I just don't think it's worth the risk. Carpet anemones, they're pretty good too. They're different, right? Carpet, carpet anemones uh, have to uh, go in the sand. They don't go on a rock like a bubble tip. Comes down to per personal preference. I, I think a lot of these clowns host carpet anemones, but I think it's less. So uh, as I'm looking through this list that I made, uh, it's a lot less that say that they are adaptable to carpet anemones. So I think you're taking a little bit more of a risk with that. Uh, let's see, the Ocellaris false percula, for example, they say that giant carpet sea anemone, that's part of their natural habitat. That's something that genetically they could host easier than maybe a bubble tip. Uh, percula, let's see. Yes, yeah, it's, it's also saying giant uh, carpet sea carpet anemone. So there's 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 some, if you if you really like to look at those carpet anemones, that's definitely something you can do as well. I personally like the bubble tip. I've had a lot of experience with it. I think it's really hardy. I think it's a great looking anemone too. But um, yeah, that's what I would say. So talking specifically about the bubble tip anemone, again, you're going to get a good bang for your buck. It's going to be hardy. It's going to look great in your tank. And like I said earlier, that thing is going to split like crazy and people are just chomping at the bit to get it. It's, it's a high demand anemone. So you'll be able to keep selling it and paying it. It'll pay back for itself over the years. My dad's has paid for itself probably 10 times over by this point. So that is the anemone that I would recommend for your needs. That is the, the anemone that I would recommend for almost anybody, especially if you're a beginner, especially if you don't already have a lot of experience with clowns and anemones, the bubble tip and maybe the carpet is the way to go. Don't invest in something that's gonna to be too expensive and too risky for you or for your tank, for your clowns. And again, keep in mind that clowns don't have to have anemones. It's not like, it's a cool symbiotic relationship but it's not an essential part of their well-being and happiness. They can be perfectly happy without them. I personally think that having a clownfish with an anemone is one of the coolest things that you can have in a saltwater fish tank. So I hope this guide helped you. I hope this helps explain why the bubble tip anemone is the best anemone on the market for your needs. Maybe you're an expert. Maybe you have a big budget. If that's the case, you can go look at some of these other anemones that are super expensive and super hard to have. And you might, you might disagree with me on some of those points there. But for most of the people that will be watching this video, that is what I would recommend. Let me know what you think below in the comments though. What anemone do you have? What anemones have you had in the past? I'd love to hear about it. Love to talk to you. Thank you so much for watching. Please go and like this video, comment, let us know what you think below. 
and subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time.